Next question. Examine constraints faced by the Indian GDP from achieving its potential GDP. This is on lines with UPSC previous year question. And mind you, whenever the question has keyword like examine, comment, you should become very cautious while answering those questions. They need greater analysis. You cannot just randomly dump the points. Such questions, you might be having content, but how you utilize them, how you deliver it to the examiner plays very important role. We have already seen what is GDP, what is the concepts of GDP, and we have also seen how we calculate GDP and what are the issues in calculation of the GDP. Based on that, we can write this answer. Before writing this answer, we have to understand what is the potential GDP? Potential GDP means what is the maximum level that a GDP can grow and what is the actual we have? There would be always gap between the potential and actual. What is the highest level you can achieve when you utilize all of the factors of production in an effective manner? This is what we have seen. We have seen while, calls, while calculating the concept of GDP, we have seen how the factors of production are contributing to the GDP. Now all those factors of production, be it a land, be it labor, be it a capital or entrepreneur, when are at its best, we take this actual GDP to this potential. From this actual to the potential, there is a gap. What are the constraints that Indian GDP is facing from reaching its potential? Definitely you all people will have points, but how you arrange those points plays a key role in this question. First start about the introduction. India's GDP is the world's largest economy in terms of the PPP. However, actual GDP is less than its potential GDP due to many constraints. Now if you observe, I have connected to the question or else it does not make sense. Now what are those constraints? If you observe, I have divided these constraints into the structural head, supply chain head, demand based head and then also have given the concerns according to the economic survey. You can bring out your own ideas in structuring this question. This is my idea of framing this question or answer for this question. Now let's understand these points. Mind you, do not just mention like this keywords in the exam. I have given lot of points here. From this, you take up few points and explain how that is a constraint. For the explanatory purpose, for the revision purpose, I have given this thing. Or I have given all the points that is relevant. So what are the structural problems? Structural problem means that is the basis, core problem, base problem, root problem, we can say. So what are those problems? Indian economy, Indian economy is primarily agrarian based economy. Most of the people are dependent on the agriculture. Our agriculture is subsistent oriented. You all know that. Subsistence means only it is helpful for sustainable purposes of that family. It is not on commercial lines. We do not have such kind of capacity where we commercialize our agricultural products. We are trying to do that. We are trying to achieve that. But most of it is still sustainable. So our farmer incomes are very low. That's what I told you in the previous session as well. 60% of the people, that is the employment that is being generated with the agriculture, they are providing only 16 rupees. That is the contribution of agriculture to the GDP. So that is the major constraint. Any country can provide employment if it is focusing on its manufacturing sector. We have already seen this discussion. Most of the, this answer can be, this question can be answered based on our discussion from the previous topics. That's the reason we are promoting the Make in India manufacturing policy because we have to promote that manufacturing. But India, after the liberalization, new economic policy in 1991, we jumped from agriculture to the service sector. We did not see such kind of growth of manufacturing sector. Why? Why did, why did we miss that? Because manufacturing needs huge amount of infrastructure in terms of the roads, railways, skill, technology. For the service sector, Infrastructure is limited in nature. 
I don't need such a kind of huge infrastructure to deliver the classes, which is which comes under the service industry. But if I have to design or to manufacture this board, I need so much of technology and infrastructure behind it. So service sector took off, but manufacturing sector did not. So we had premature deindustrialization. Why we had premature deindustrialization? Because of lack of those factors. That is also a structural problem. Low tax to GDP. While developed nations, like say OECD nations, have tax to GDP percentage as 30, minimum 33 percentage. India is somewhere around 12 percentage. So this is also a major problem. When you have low tax to GDP, resources with the government are less. There is no fiscal space available to the government to increase its capital expenditure or to promote the growth in investment. So there is low tax to GDP. Higher NPS. We have already discussed this thing. When there are higher NPS. profitability of the banks come down when there is low profitability to the banks banks will not be willing enough to give credit to the borrower when there is no credit given to the borrower investment will come down this will bring down our gdp i have told you our credit growth during the time of the covid has come to as low as 65 percentage of the gdp while in the developed nations it is 140 percentage approx now we have come back again to the 100 percentage of the gdp so that is one more problem infrastructure problem we have already seen this logistic cost that is costing 14 percentage of the gdp when there are such a huge amount of problems in the infrastructure you don't have competition you cannot compete your goods cannot compete with those goods which are coming from those areas which have very good infrastructure the cost of your product would be very high we have discussed these things labor problems labor problem means not just about the labor laws it is everything the labor do not have the skill once upsc has asked question uh, we have useless and uh, useless manpower okay so the manpower whatever we have is not skilled enough added to this whatever the labor laws we have they are highly restrictive in nature they are not helping both the employer and the employee employee will feel if i hire the person i have to go through so many restrictions if i have to fire them so employer is not coming forward to hire as a result employee is also not getting benefited and there is no skills with the person whom the employer wants to hire so cost for his industry is increasing so these are the labor problems on this also separate independent question can be asked this is also there labor laws it is there in the syllabus book in the laws part then informal economy we have already seen what are the problems of the informal economy supply chain forward and backward linkages will not be developed if the economy is informal in nature and and we have also seen energy crisis 85% of our fossil fuels are imported one we do not have energy security if there is no such security then what is the problem you have to discuss it here one thing it causes current account deficit or else whenever there is global uncertainty it causes inflation to us hurting our export potential then what are the production side related problems icor is very high i have discussed this thing to generate one unit of output what is the how much amount of capital is needed current it is 4 it is very high so it has to come down we need to generate more amount of output with less amount of capital but it is high investment slow down this is very important point we have investment rate of 41 percentage during the 2011 but it has come down to 29 percentage china was china had maintained this 41 percentage of higher investment rate for one decade that is the reason the manufacturing contribution of the china is 25 percentage we we also want to bring this manufacturing contribution to the gdp to 25 percentage but still we could not it is somewhere around 17 and 18 percentage lower value chain products what is this while discussing agriculture i told you horticulture is giving more returns than the cereal crops so if i talk about the agriculture supply chain the cereals come under the lower chain and horticulture comes under the higher chain because they are giving greater returns the value or output or returns 
of the horticulture commodities are higher in nature in the same way in the industrial sector what we do is generally we export the mines and minerals with this what happens is we are exporting raw materials we export tons and tons of iron aluminum all these things then we export it to the japan what they do is they will export us these kind of boats cameras and because of this thing there is current account deficit so much of uh, currency is going from us to them and minerals are going them so in future we might also face uh, resource constraints and development will also will not happen the returns that can be generated by exporting the minerals is less than returns that can be generated by exporting the higher value chain products lack of forward and backward linkages logistics which i have already discussed policy paralysis or policy related problems like say land acquisition delays in approvals all these things will increase the cost of the project we have already seen this thing such kind of problem in the polarworm issue where cost overrun has happened that is the case with every uh, every project that's the reason we have the gadi shakti mission now demand related we have seen pent up demand means whatever the demand that was suppressed during the covid time suddenly there was higher demand because of this demand there was a inflation in order to control that demand because supply cannot match sudden rise in demand various measures were taken both by the central bank and also the government you you already are aware of this thing interest rates have been increased taxation rates have been increased so all these things will uh, reduce the demand monetary tightening and fed taper globally is also it is happening fed taper i have already mentioned now discuss this thing in the rural areas development is less so if the le- if there is less development why there is less development because of lack of development in the agriculture and lack of alternative sources of employment and livelihood rural areas constitute 70% of the india and if the demand from the rural areas is very less it is very difficult for the gdp growth rate to happen what the concerns are mentioned by the economic survey these are the points that are mentioned in the recent economic survey along with a few other points globally there are protectionist measures means they are imposing taxes customs duties on your products globally the demand inflation is very high the demand is coming down so even if you export products it is not going to give you good returns like say you have uh, russia and ukraine crisis all these things are causing problem and then we have seen monetary policy contraction be it india or in the outside nations supply chain disruptions are happening during the from the time of covid and also currently due to the russia and ukraine conflict and late convergence stall this was a thing that was mentioned by previous economic survey what it means is the the economic survey said time is gone india could not catch the bus why they dis- why they said that one example i will tell you industrial revolution happened in the developed nations now we cannot see same level of industrial revolution why because during the time we do not have proper labor laws they exploited as much as they want they do not have environmental laws they burnt coal as much as they want and they have generated enough products now we lost the track now enough number of countries have already rising now we have labor laws environmental laws so that's the reason they say late convergence stall we could not utilize those potentials that was gap time period that was left for us to achieve that level of development now it is difficult for us this is also leading us to the middle income trap means our income has been restricted to the middle income countries because of all these factors so to build or is to break this what the government has done national infrastructure pipeline 100 lakh 116 lakh crore project we have already seen this thing we will see this thing also uh various measures has been taken up government okay so th- uh, all these measures are expected to promote the gdp according to the economic survey india recently has crossed pre covid levels of gdp and there are improvements in the twin balance sheet growth in the bank credit and poverty levels are also coming down very good sign tax collections are also growing thus india is on track to attain its potential gdp that could be a good futuristic conclusion thank you